Today, I have Anastasia Fazal with me from the project Luminous Row. And Anastasia is a regenerative detoxification specialist and a holistic health consultant. Um, I discovered your YouTube channel, Anastasia, probably two years ago uh, when I was scrolling through the comment section of another um, channel talking about food forest. And I think you left a comment there. And that's how I went to your YouTube channel and found your, your videos and followed you since then. Um, I think you started your YouTube channel three years ago and you documented also a lot your your juicing experiences and um, I thank you for for being here with me I'm really delighted to create this moment with you and maybe to start things with I would like to maybe open the space for you to talk about your background growing up and maybe also especially with a focus maybe on food and the relationship you had with food at that time yeah thank you so much Ariana for having me it's a pleasure to talk with you today. Um, I grew up in a very big city and I also grew up in the village at the same time. So I think that's a very important aspect of my childhood that played tremendous role in who I am right now. So I was born in St. Petersburg, Russia. It's 6 million city people six million people city and um it's pretty intense pretty dense a lot of energy and my paternal grandfather was a registered nurse so i was heavily exposed to the western way of medicine and on the other side i had my maternal grandparents who lived in belarus and they had a house in the village and I would stay in the summertime with them. And so my grandfather would teach me herbalism because he was a professional herbalist. He would teach me how to grow food. He had his own land. Uh, he would teach me how to forage mushrooms and harvest wild plants. And so my childhood was really filled with these two experiences, which were very different. And... I would say I mostly felt myself at home when I was in the land, in the forest, in nature. And then I had to return back to the city. And of course, again, there was different food, different activities, different habits. And so I would spend my school time at home with my parents and of course, the relationship with food was just like, I think we all, most of us at least, grew up um, being told that what we are supposed to eat, how we're supposed to eat it, how many times a day. And I remember myself that I disliked certain foods so much that I just couldn't stand them and I was forced to eat them. Um, I especially remember one of the experiences in my kindergarten when uh, they forced me to eat boiled fish with boiled egg and it was just a very weird mixture of those two things and I I was three years old and I remember I was just gagging and couldn't take that food and yet people, teachers, forced me to eat that food and so many times experiencing those things growing up I think I really forgot the way my body was truly designed and was and what I was supposed to eat, except for when, again, I would go to the village, I would have all the fresh fruit from, from straight from the land, from a tree, a lot of fruit. My grandfather would make amazing salads every day, different kind of salads, fresh. And I also would notice that I would feel much better. You know, my body would feel more elevated and I would feel more strong. Of course, running around outside in the sunlight, absorbing all that energy, I would come back to the city and all over again. And so I started getting sick 
very early in life. Um, I was born a very healthy child. And then after regular procedures that doctors do to children, I start getting sick. Um, and my mom was puzzled. She didn't know what to do. So I developed, with time, I developed chronic bronchitis and a lot of inflammation in my nose and my ears, ear infections, frequent colds, flus. And as everyone thought, my immune system was very weak. So I was put on different kinds of medications. And with time, as I was growing up, I just developed more and more chronic diseases. And it was really confusing to me because I also was a gymnast and I loved being in my body. I loved practicing. So it's it's a really strenuous training, self-discipline, everything put into practice. You know, I did not negotiate my training time. I would show up no matter what, no matter how I felt, no matter what kind of pain I had in my body. So I really pushed through it. And I was doing it since I was six years old, all the way until 15. So at this time, I was kind of gathering my strength and power, despite what was going on with me and my body. And somehow, because my grandmother was a nurse, I developed this idea that it's okay to be sick. It's kind of fine to feel like that it's normal and at the same time i knew my spirit knew my soul knew that there was something much bigger for us to experience and i always had a question why people get sick what is going on how did we get to this point that there are so many hospitals so many clinics and yet people continuously getting sick how come we cannot figure out what is going on so i think that's overall background of my childhood what kind of diet were, were you being fed with and when did you start maybe to modify your 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 food habits yeah yeah that's a great question i i was fed the regular diet i would say standard american diet would sound close to it um or russian standard diet <laughs> So it's basically a lot of potatoes, a lot of rice, beans, soups, a lot of meat. So every meal had a meat in it, mostly a lot of fat, a lot of mayonnaise. Um, so really things like break, um, oatmeal for breakfast, different kind of porridges for breakfast, eggs milk, ice creams, all sorts of dairy cheeses. So my dad was, I have tried everything, I guess, in this life. <laughs> so that was my main diet all the way I until I changed it um, completely in 2015. But modifying my habits, I started pretty early in life. I was very aware. I was growing up with this bright spirit who was so curious to learn and to know the truth and to just be here and be present and do its best to to recognize who I was you know I was searching for myself I was searching who I was and I always had a lot of questions and one of those questions was as I said why do people get sick um I started working at a clinic in Russia back in when I was 15 years old. So I was in high school at that time and I needed some extra money. So I started working there first as a janitor. And so I would take all the medical books and I would sit and read them on my break time. And I would go through all of the diseases. And I cannot tell you how many of those books I read because I ended up working in that clinic for six years. So the first year I worked as a janitor and then I got to statistic department where I had to 
put in the data in the computer. Basically, every day I would get a pile of paperwork with the patient's name and their disease. And that was my job to just keep track of those things. And then the questions started arising even more. So I started seeing the parallel in like certain ages and certain diseases. And I was questioning even deeper, like how come there is no understanding what causes all of those things. So we have so many people coming through the clinic so many day, every single day, and yet all we do is just, we give them medications and we let them go and they come back. So there was a certain trait in this process that coming back of the patient with worse results even, with worse, worse health outcomes than what was expected. And meanwhile, I was going, I myself was going through the same things. So I had stomach issues, digestive issues. I continued having colds and flus. And slowly but surely, I became more and more depressed because of those issues. Imagine you were growing up and as a teenager, you're going not only through your own developmental processes, but also you have to battle through multiple diseases and you don't even understand why you have them. <laughs> so um, for me, there was a lot of questioning and I started modifying my diet when I noticed that by the time I turned 21, I started gaining weight and um, <laughs> I, already stopped practicing gymnastics because I had severe pain all over my body, basically already manifest in rheumatoid arthritis, but I was not diagnosed with it yet. And um, when I started gaining weight, I started questioning again. So why is it happening with me? What is going on? And I started reading every single label in the grocery store. So I became really, really aware of what I was putting in my body. And when I would read something that I would not understand, I would tell myself I was not supposed to eat that. Of course, I still ate meat and dairy and eggs and a lot of food. And yet I was slowly cutting off things that I felt were not serving me anymore. With what did you, did you start to, to, to cut like, a, like, was it, was it gluten first or was it meat or? Uh, first it was Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it was Coca-Cola. Uh, I was like, why, why am I putting something in my body that is so empty and it's just sugar and so I, I cut all the soda drinks that I was uh, consuming at that time and I lost like 10 pounds instantly it was within two weeks it was just gone and um so from that point on I just would be mindful of buying processed food like let's say if there was some processed food with unknown chemicals I would just not uh, not purchase it but then again I was taking so many medications that I think it numbed my consciousness it numbed my body sensations and it made me it made harder to recognize my own body signals and really understand what is good for my body what is not and I kind of continued going on this train of a habit of eating whatever I was taught to eat in childhood all the way until my child was born in 2015. So that was the, the pivotal moment in my journey when everything changed. Um, and yeah, before that, it was just slowly trying to eat as natural and as clean as I possibly could understand at that time uh, with that consciousness that I had. Yeah, yeah. There is a lot of work to 
the program with food and it cannot be done over a year. It's like a process that goes hand in hand with, with the journey. And and so what about the, the medication? Did did they were they suggest by the medical field first probably the first one and um because i read that you uh, up to a certain point you were reliant on different kind of medication and and then of, with the journey you you transformed that so i was wondering how how did it get started yeah so medications was something very common common in my family so everyone was taking medications. It was just what people did, right? And um, my grandmother, who was a nurse, she really, she would just give out medications left and right to people and say, that's what we do when we get sick. And so for me, it was kind of normal to try to fix my body issues with the medications. And with time, the amount of medications increased exponentially. So if before I would take just cold and flu medications, and then I had a very severe ear infection that put me to the hospital for two months at the age of 13. So I... I almost died from the medications that I was prescribed. So I had hallucinations and I had like very weird things going on with my body until I started just, you know, flushing those medications down the drain because I figured out that they were not helping me and they were just making things worse. And yet that was something that everyone did around me and I was doing the same thing. And I was going to the doctors and asking what kind of medications would help me with this issue and with that issue. And like a, a good student, I would do the thing that teacher would tell me, right? I would just take those medications. And by the time I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, which was at the age of 26, they finally realized what was happening with me. So I really had a lot of joint issues and swollen joints, a lot of inflammation, chronic fatigue, um, migraines, a lot of things that were just preventing me from my regular lifestyle. And when I was diagnosed, they prescribed me cancer medications they prescribed me steroids. Uh, I also was very, very depressed from what was going on. So they prescribed me heavy antidepressants. I had complex PTSD as well. So I was on different psychotic medications, I would say psychiatry medications. And it was very heavy. So by the time I quit all the medications, I was on total of 17 different pharmaceutical drugs and looking back now I sometimes just feel so grateful and also feel shocked that how much this body could take it and how much miraculous how miraculous this this organism is that it was able to clear it all out at least most of it out and still thrive and get back and heal itself that is to me personally that's the most miraculous thing it's a poison it's pure poison it destroys everything within you it destroys it's so acidic my hair almost all of my hair was gone I, I lost a lot of hair I couldn't I couldn't really perform my daily tasks being on those medications. So whenever I would take them, the next day I was out for the day, I would be just vomiting and uh, feeling sick and feeling horrible, much worse than I would be without them. I, 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 I can imagine how um, they, they have a profound effect and it's 
makes they make it more difficult to connect and anchor to our spirit and that's one of the reasons why also they are being introduced also on on our timelines and why it's so important also to walk away from the crutch that they they can they can give and also as you were mentioning the the external authority can be very strong and i think it's something that we have to work on um, step by step because it's a delay de delaying uh, so i know that you also received you know, medical diagnosis that were not really encouraging, that were maybe the contrary, probably very discouraging. So how, how has it been for you to finally find the first exit door to this heavy, I mean, it's a, it's a prison on, on many levels. Um, I think it all starts with really with love. Like all the healing, uh, all the profound change starts with love for everything and everyone and as an extension or as a source for yourself so to me those two things are not separable so self-love and love for everyone is the same and for me it was really the feeling of being worthy of something better and deserving better health and better ability to be in this world, to show up for myself, for my family, for others. And understanding that health issues truly prevented me from that. And for me, it was this choice of what do I really want in life? How do I want to be? How do I want to become? Because I saw those beautiful visions in my mental projection I, I saw that there was something greater and my challenge was to figure out how to be there I don't like the word to get there or to achieve that because I really love anchoring in the present moment and for me it's more like unfolding that vision how is it going to happen right when I did suffer so much I also saw how other people were suffering. The same people who shared uh, rooms in the hospital with me, let's say, or people in the ER. So there was a lot of, you know, interesting energies involved in my healing process. And I think I always was searching and seeking for that. And that's why it came to me more not as like mental going out and you know googling and finding people who does what to feel better and at that time I think it was not even available to me I just moved to America after being diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis and I really thought that here in different country it would be different and I might find different answers to my questions and yet the medical system was exactly the same with the exception of one thing is that I had to also pay out of my pocket for those medications and for diagnosis and for going to doctors. But that is another topic. And so it was more and more kind of compounding into this push from the universe, I would say, that uh, my soul, my spirit, so much desired to be free. And I was just figuring out how do I support my body in this process also? And how do I maybe find my own solution for those things? Because I remember, as I said, I had a glimpse at what health can look like while I was being in nature. And so... One day in the hospital, I was waiting in the line to get my prescription medications filled. And there was a person who came to me. He sat near me and he said, he asked me to turn off my phone because he said that the waves bothered him. And he leaned forward and he said, sister, nature will heal you. And that was it. So, and that person gave me like a, 
little website address where I found the information about raw food. And so it was a message. And then the second message of the same nature I received from my ex-husband because he was doing research and he saw how people were healing themselves with rheumatoid arthritis. So he also planted that seed. Yet at that time, I was not really ready to radically change anything or I think I didn't really understand that the medications were the problem, that they were blocking my sensations. They were not letting me really see through and also they kept me in a very big fear that just like you said, it's a crutch. Like what is gonna happen if I drop that crutch? Can I still walk? And that was that feeling like if I if I quit all the medications, I will just die. Something will happen. And it took me a lot of courage to realize that that's what was truly impacting my nervous system and all other systems of my body. And I had to first quit that heavy chemistry and not to put it in my body anymore. And so in 2013, I bought a juicer and <laughs> I, um, I didn't have a car at the time. And I remember I was walking to there's a health store here at Whole Foods and I was walking to that Whole Foods for one hour to just get my greens and organic produce and walk walked back still suffering the pain from rheumatoid arthritis still having that inflammation and yet my determination was really really strong <laughs> because I wanted to experience that and I wanted to see what what it was about so I got the juicer and I started juicing um I still had the same diet and just by adding a juice instead of breakfast made a lot of difference. So I started cleansing and I re recognized that I, I would feel the, you know, smell of chemicals coming out of my body. And it was really, really unpleasant, you know, very strong cleansing reactions to I, as I said, I still was on those cancer medications and I was losing my hair. And oh, I also I also developed a very bad habit of smoking cigarette at that time. So it was like everything. I never smoked cigarettes when I was growing up. And by the age of 29, I was so fed up with all what was happening, so much heavy weight on on my shoulders from those diseases that I started taking the stress out on cigarettes. So that even, you know, worsened the situation, of course, and it, it made it worse. And so I, once I got the juicer, I was able to come off medications, quit the cigarettes. I really started feeling much better. I still had symptoms. And so within a year, I continued eating all the diet that I ate, meat, dairy, eggs, all sorts of things. Plus I was doing juices and I was not doing cigarettes anymore and I was not doing medications. And I also quit all the alcohol as well. So it was all 2013, like this big, um, big leap of faith, quitting those things that, clearly didn't serve me anymore and so within a year so I, I got pregnant in 2014 I found out that my husband and I were expecting a child and before that doctors told me that I would never be able to have children that if I ever get pregnant they would try to talk me out of it and things like that and that was very very heavy on me because I always wanted to be a mom that was my biggest desire in this life I think more than anything I wanted to have children to experience motherhood and to to really bring this love into this world and so that was another motivation for me to start changing my habits because I recognized that if I don't then I wouldn't be able to 
experience what I wanted to, right? And um, I had very hard pregnancy because I still had rheumatoid arthritis. As I said, my diet was still the same, but I was not taking any medications. So I was in pain. I was in a lot of pain. I just moved to Colorado at that time, and it was a change of climate, change of altitude, being also lonely in a new place. So I went through challenging pregnancy, but I was very happy to expect my child. And when he came, I had this very, very profound spiritual experience while I was in labor. And I um, I think that truly that human being who came through me, I'm so thankful to his presence because it pushed me to to different extent of my healing journey. So I had this download, this beautiful download that all the animals on the planet are just as I I am, you know, they give birth the same way, the cows give this birth the same way, they experience this pain, and then humans just take them and, you know, do whatever we want with them, and it was like centered around the cow, and around birth, and around children, and babies, and all the animals together united, so it was, it was a live birth, you know, I didn't have any medications or anything. And it was very profound. And I really didn't understand what it meant for me until I got back home and I, I started eating the food again. I, <laughs> I got back home from the hospital. And I remember my uh, ex-husband brought me um, a chicken pot pie. And I looked at it and I said, I, you know what? I can't, I just can't do it anymore. I don't feel it. And um, I told him at that time that, you know, it's just my choice. And I feel that I'm going to stay away from all the animal products now. And it was truly a spiritual experience and spiritual choice. And I was very, very surprised after I quit all the, uh, animal products because it was easy for me at that point it was not a struggle for me at all it was just the need of my soul and it was expressed to me this way and I had to follow so for me there was no physical struggle whatsoever and um, no cravings nothing just the push away of the energies different energies and I started feeling much better <laughs> Within a month, all most of my rheumatoid arthritis symptoms just they were just gone, and I yeah it was really shocking to me, and it showed me that quitting something is great, and yet I needed to radically change my diet to to see a big improvement, and um. Basically, from that point on, I was nonstop researching and uh, digging into the knowledge of nutrition and healing and self-healing and all the beautiful wisdom that is available to us at this day and age by internet libraries and other human beings that is truly amazing. Wow, that's that's incredible that the symptoms vanish completely, and uh, it must have you know it feels I, I imagine it feels very different, and I know from my own journey it feels very different uh, as it goes to 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 be in the body and maybe more and more welcoming. And um, so, how was it then? You you were mostly on a plant based diet, but I imagine there was still a process also from cook food to to raw food and even more to with the with the juice the juice fast uh, so how did they and and by the time when you quit meat so it was just after when you were a new mom right and and so how, how did it go from from there yeah so from there basically i 
started quitting more and more things that didn't serve me. <laughs> it was a very interesting journey of shedding off old skin, just like snakes do. It's It was incredible because I truly realized that there was no limit to change. And the things that I was discovering on the way just supported that idea that great things are possible, feeling amazing in your body and being really whole because the word health even is the wholeness, is being able to be whole with yourself, with your body, mind and spirit in a very harmonious way, in a very present and beautiful way. And that was my vision of the future. So starting from that point when I quit all the animal products and I felt much better, I saw even more and more health coming my, my way because it felt to me as if I unlocked the door. I was just staring at that door, questioning it, and all of a sudden the key was there in my hand and the door unlocked and there was another different beautiful life. And the possibilities were different. So I slowly but surely I quit any sugar. So I was plant-based, but I was still eating cookies and all sorts of pastries. And slowly my body was just starting shifting, started shifting and I I quit sugar. So together with sugar goes all the pastry and all the flour products and all of that. And it felt even better. And then I had a habit of drinking coffee. I quit coffee and I felt even better because by that time, by the time I was still on coffee, I I had headaches. And I realized that the more I cleansed my body, the more connections I I felt like how different foods or drinks would affect my body and where it would manifest. And so I definitely connected coffee and headaches and I quit that in 2017. And so it just kept unfolding more and more. And in 2018, I had this experience again. I think it was very spiritual experience too because my son and I went to farmer's market and we got all different beautiful fruits and vegetables very colorful and I love making art and I love color so for me the vibration of those fruits and vegetables is also very high and when we got home I started cooking some of those vegetables and as I looked at them in the pot I saw that the color was just vanishing and going away. And I had this realization in my heart that I would love to eat for color. And I, I switched overnight to raw food. So I already heard about raw food a lot. I heard of, uh, uh, different people talking about that. And I read about it. And yet there was something that I was just not ready. And when I was ready, that's when it took me with, with it in, in this beautiful journey. And when I switched to raw, I was, I was really curious about, you know, different kind of dishes and how to create different recipes. So I would practice making desserts and doing all sorts of different uh, raw gourmet recipes. And it was amazing. It made me feel feel even better. And then one day I was in meditation and I had this, again, this download telling me that it's now time to experience juice fast. And I started with four days of water fast. And um, at that time I was still breastfeeding. My son was three years old. I was still breastfeeding and I felt, I just felt that going too much on water would really diminish me from nutrients and my energy levels. And I had to be active and take care for him. So 
I um, slowly from water, I came to the green juice. So I did a 30 day green juice, juice fast. And it was just life changing. It was so amazing to experience the that we can be without food, without solid food for a long time. We can cleanse our body. We can also bump up our nutrients and we can experience so such different energy levels and just different vibration overall. Um, I noticed that my life started changing on different levels, you know, on a spiritual level, on a mental level. I had this, basically the, all, all those 30 days of drinking juices, it was a very quiet meditation for my mind. It was, it was taking a break, truly taking a vacation from eating and just being with myself, being within me, listening to my experiences, listening to my mental chatter and and then just healing myself in that different and deep way would you would you say you were feeling somehow more peaceful when because it's something that i've noticed that there is there can be a sense of peacefulness that can come back from just being on on liquid food that is hard to reach uh, with solid food yeah definitely i one of the most amazing benefits of juice fast is truly a sense of peace and sense of like everything is fine everything is good you're not going to die without food the earth is here holding you it's nurturing it's it's safe it's it's okay to to just be just simply switch your attention from eating to something else and i did find that peace in in doing so and i since that point onward i only wanted to experience what brings me joy and what brings me happiness and what brings me this sense of peace and i think doing that first juice fast truly made me align with my core values once more after being on all those medications as i said i felt as i, I my consciousness was being numbed by those and um many decisions that i made being on those medications they were just very low energy and low vibration decisions and i hold the space for the for myself at that time because I still don't know how I went through that because it, it was a lot it was truly a lot as I look back I, I I I tell myself I can't even imagine my child going through this those kind of things with with those chemicals it's it's too much for the body it's too much for the mind and spirit too and um yeah so yeah, yes, it is truly, truly heroic to to, to deal with that much, and uh, I, I feel it's it's meant also to control the level of consciousness that can be reached, and this is one of the goal as well. And when you were talking, I also it just reminded me how the process is really like you you have to do the next step. Um, to do the to do the next one you cannot go already to the next one if you haven't gone to the to so it's it's like it's like a delirium process like that and um so during that long that 30 day juice fast what was the process during the juice fast did you declutter on any level like it can come or um, not 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 only physical but also there is a decluttering process because we have more space or was there more energy to for, to address some stagnant project or some stagnant energies uh, or was it more like sometimes also the the time to rest how, how was it for you um i think for me at that time it was it was a full time it was uh, autumn here and it was very calm and peaceful space so i rested a lot i um really went deep 
inside of me in the prayer and meditation and asked questions that I was not brave enough to ask when I was eating, I think. Um, and to me, it was truly an unfolding of the process that I think was my whole life is to understand that the diseases that happened to me were there for a reason. And of course, they were not just physical factors that were contributing to those diseases. It was a lot of, there were a lot of different things. And recognizing that power, I think I felt really empowering, empowered by doing just fast. That's one of the things that stood out the most to me is to realize that I am provided with everything I need just from plants, fruits and vegetables, nothing else. It's so simple. It's so it's so simple that people don't like the simplicity. <laughs> we tend to complicate things. And when it becomes so real and you're faced with the fact, okay, I'm not having anything but juices and yet I'm still cleansing. I'm still um, passing the waste matter. That was another discovery to me that actually maybe there, there's much more to the disease than just um, what I thought. And from that point on, I was focusing on the root cause of the disease and focusing on truly detoxification and regeneration on the cellular level. So while a lot of people are still staying in the confusion of what is right and what is wrong, what is good and what is bad, for me, I put my focus and intention on what I already experienced. So I experienced the undeniable benefits of the raw food and of juice fasting that I cannot deny them to myself those are my experiences so I focused my energy on that and from that point onward I decided to commit myself to this process and to commit to myself also to keep learning about who I was and how to heal even deeper, how to heal basically all the parts of my my life and my being and improve my relationships and improve my relationship with my child and be a good mom. So there was a lot of things that became important to me once more when I had the opportunity to connect my body with those values and with those intentions when my body was not functioning properly when i experienced diseases i felt disconnected and i felt that i i was not functioning fully out of who i was and i was not truly leading from my heart i was not guiding from from my soul I was rather you know instinctually going and and trying to feel better all the time and trying to get myself to a certain state where when I would feel that I can express myself in a different way and and, and how did it go uh, after when you exited the fast how did you guide yourself through back to solid food maybe how, how was it it was it was pretty smooth, so I didn't really know at that time how to correctly break juice fast or <laughs> anything. I went slowly to eating again like fruit and then salads, and I was raw. I stayed raw for for years, so I'm I I continued with that diet, and I really loved it. Um, and I also didn't know at that time that I would you know go on and do more juice fasts so at that time I was already pretty good I felt felt really cleansed I felt a lot of energy I didn't have any fatigue or anything like that and felt much much better than you know back in 2015 before my son was born 
Um, and that was just a period of three years of time, timeline, right? And I, I have experienced those results. And I felt that after that 30 day just fast, I felt that probably that's it. There cannot be anything better than that, you know, uh, until I found out that people actually can do extended just fasts and um, can feel even better and clear out even more things out of their body and restore and regenerate organs and tissues. And that was even more magical. I can imagine that. I know that it feels like an accomplishment to have done a first long, long, long-term juice fast. And I think at that moment, it's probably best not to think about about more and more because it's already such a, such a big accomplishment already. So what happened in between the time uh, where you were exiting this first fast and, and before your decision to, to, to start another long-term juice fast that was maybe it was all it was three times three times the time and I'm I'm not sure I'm aware of when it was chronologically on your path um so basically it was a year after my 30 day juice fast um, that I committed to a long-term juice fast and the main reason for that was that I wanted to see. So I started, the more I was on a raw food lifestyle, so I continued being raw. Um, my health was good. I never got sick while being raw, like not even once. And I uh, felt strong. And I also started experiencing detox symptoms so a lot of times when people go on a raw food diet just by eating fruit they would start experiencing detoxification symptoms and I recognized that I had a lot of medication deposits in my body so I would you know sometimes I would pass some kind of mucus that was having this medication smell and I didn't have medication in my body for uh, for the for several years by that point and that was that started bringing my attention to this I decided I made a decision I said okay I'm gonna commit to that and I think bringing back my discipline you know being a gymnast that's what really helped me to stay strong in the first like month and go with the detoxification symptoms and take care for myself so I didn't know for how long I would go on that juice fast and it ended up being four months so it was 115 days juice fast and I truly deeply cleansed my body at that time it was amazing to experience what I did what kind of things were coming out of me and how I felt exponentially better and better and better and my energy levels were so high and I started seeing many things in a very different way and I also experienced like energetic purging a lot of people were leaving my life at that time and a lot of new people started coming in those who were really aligned with my energy and I was able to create community at that time. I opened my channel and I decided to share the message because by that point it was, I just could not not share the message. Uh, it was necessary for me to transfer that knowledge, to truly teach people that this is possible. I know you suffer, I know your struggle. I've been there and I'm coming out of my heart to just simply share what is going on and how it's going. And from that point onwards, it was just a beautiful ripple effect of things happening and moving and changing, shifting, transforming, and all this beautiful way of life was opened for me once more the more I cleansed my body, the more my mental state became stronger, 
and a lot of unnecessary patterns were released from my mental state and a lot of strength came together with that a confidence in my experience and in what was truly going on with the body and with mind and spirit and how it was all aligned together and, uh, and when you when you talk about unnecessary pattern being released and even for you know relationships collapsing what um, you know how, could you could you could you elaborate a little bit more about them and uh, what what kind of unnecessary pattern and was there any pattern in the relationships and was there any toxicity or what what, what how how did the mindset maybe were different um i i think i'll start with a little background that i grew up in a very toxic swirl of relationship in my family of origin so I didn't know that there could be different things, let's say. Or rather, I was aware that there could be, but I didn't experience them yet. And so when I started detoxing, I started seeing that, okay, some of the relationships I had, even with friends and with family, were truly based on rather on this unhealthy exchange and uh, toxicity than on genuine connection. And my heart desired for genuine connection. So, and of course I had those relationships in my life that I could anchor and relate to. As I continued detoxing, I wanted all my relationship to be this way. So I, and, and it's natural process because as we go through the detoxification process, more and more we cleanse, the more and more we align with our own self and we know what we are and who we are and we start discovering truly our deepest desires for this life. And I think one of the most important things that I realized during those juice fasts is that Time is the most precious resource, not money, not money. And I found out that I was taught, I was taught to think that money was something that was of importance. And I kind of started valuing everything unconsciously against that. And I don't know if that would make any sense, but... <laughs> I I switched my perception or rather it just shifted naturally during just fast and I started realizing that time, connection, love, those things that are intangible, those are the most precious things and that's where I need to really invest and put my intention to and put my attention to and focus on rather than being in somebody else's struggles and patterns because I saw my way out of it and I wanted to show the way out to other people and by people who didn't believe in me who told me that I was crazy doing those things healing myself I wanted to spend less time on that and not to waste my precious resource of time so Truly redefining time for myself, that's what made this possible to recognize unhealthy relationships, to let go of those unhealthy relationships. Although I can tell you it's very hard. It's it's super hard. It's very challenging. There is a lot of grief involved in those processes. And a lot of times in our cultures, we are not taught to experience grief with with grace and gratitude for what it is, for what it is teaching us. And we rather tend to attach to those unhealthy experiences rather than letting them go. And at that time, I started practicing yoga again. Um, I did practice yoga in Russia before I moved here. And um, 
being able to practice it again, returning to the practice because I had, I now had body to do that. I was able and capable without pain. I created a routine to myself. So I do not, I, I don't negotiate my yoga practice. I show up on the mat whether I want it or I don't want it or I don't feel it. I just, I am there. And so aligning back with myself in this way and seeing life from yoga perspective, from this unity and how things really work, the most hardest thing for me was to let go of my marriage so of that experience that I recognized that that was not healthy at all. So I definitely understand that I, I loved my ex-husband a lot. So family was the most important thing for me. And at some point, it just our ways had to split because of those processes. And it's very hard for a lot of people to I think separate themselves from their relationships and the healing process. And a lot of people go back to their old habits just to stay in those relationships out of security, out of feeling that they 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 can't they just can't do that for family, for for anything. But for me it was necessary. I think to let go of all the old things that were holding me back because I wanted people in my life who would be supportive of what I do, who would truly see what it was that what I discovered through this journey was really valuable to others. And it could truly help other people to improve their life to the point that they can be healthy and happy. And what else what else can we desire? That's that's the most important thing, to be able to be healthy, happy, present with our loved ones. And so people who did not support me in this journey were not meant to be there with me. Because for me, it became a point of either I choose myself or I choose them. And it's I don't even know them that much to be able to do to make this kind of choice. And every time I I kept choosing myself, regardless of what others were telling me was right or wrong, because a lot of people didn't understand, you know, raw food, what you're not cooking your food and you're just drinking juices. You I are you still alive? And so but, there are a lot of things that um they're taught in the society that that are simple, simply not true. And it takes a lot of courage, I think, to just, even just being able to question, just ask questions, a lot, a lot of questions, like why does it work this way? Is that so? Is it really true? And then going on and discovering for yourself with your experience. Um, and I think letting go of, of relationships that don't work or in any way drain our energy and are disrespectful or emotionally draining abusive narcissistic all of that needs to go for us to truly feel who we are to feel our worth to feel our importance and confidence in this life so that was the journey with the relationships and what in the dynamic was really ho holding you back um what, what was it control energy or um the, this this lack of of encouragement or or it can be also triggering all the time this this wound of non-recognition or and and then we though inside we we know and we have experienced it i mean the experience of it is is very convincing uh, and the more we experience i mean the more you experience with uh, cellular detoxification raw food and juice the more at least i came to understand even more like there is there is only so much that i could understand up to there and the more i 
I mean, there, there, there's still a lot of things that I understand only now because it takes time. There is a lot of programming and conditioning with food and, uh, and there is a timing as well. And I think it comes also with denumbing and delayering step by step. And then we can feel just the next pocket of, of consciousness. Uh, so, so could you, could you elaborate a little bit more about the, the dynamic with, with your ex-husband and maybe with other people that were around you at that time in your life? Mm, yeah, sure. I, uh, at first, um, my ex-husband was, um, encouraging, I think, towards my healing process because he was the one who was in the hospitals with me all the time and uh he knew how much I went through and he was he was there sitting and waiting in in six uh, eight hours while I was you know getting help from emergency room or whatever so he knew and yet I think a lot of times when we are in a close relationship with somebody we need to be aware that we attracted the energy that we were at that time so there was no mistake that we were together and of course i cannot say anything is a mistake with any kind of relationships they're always teaching us something and it's very important to understand that blaming anybody for anything is not an option and it's not the path towards your healing so sitting first of all my uh, first thing with my relationships with anybody was realization that there should be no blame for those people there should be really deep forgiveness for whatever whoever did in the past and how it played out and now is the time to just sit back and watch and learn from that and at some point in my long-term juice fast, I realized that it, it was very interesting because <laughs> I realized that I was in a way married to my mother. So it was, I was just repeating those, those patterns that she had in her relationships with me at the time I was little and I brought it to my marriage. And so it was, and, and I had very hard and challenging relationships with my mother. They're much better now. We have learned a lot together and we have improved. But at that time, it was truly challenging and turmoil. And all the time, there was this toxic push and pull from, from her. And so I started, as the more I detoxed the more I started seeing as if this whale was falling off my eyes that actually those patterns in my relationships that I have with my husband this controlling energy of his you know being um so it was very isolating and controlling energy and it was very um hard on me as as I healed myself, as I continued healing myself, and I started feeling better and better, I started seeing that I was not supposed to be treated in, in the way that he did. And uh, I think the self-worth and self-value goes really up <laughs> when you do things like juice fast and raw food, because it allows you to, to, to sense yourself, to have all your sensations and signals and your internal communication processes are in line so you are, you become online again with yourself um you tune into your yourself and your body and you know instantaneously when the energies are toxic around you and when you're not supposed to feel this way um but for me i really was indoctrinated i think in this thought that a woman is not supposed to leave a man you know, we're supposed to stay in the marriage no matter what and tolerate and be strong. And I think it honestly comes from the Soviet Union era <laughs> when I was I was born in Soviet. And so it was kind of like very patriarchal way of 
of of being in the family like the man is the head and you're just like under the man and uh, my ex-husband was from the middle east and so that also was the same kind of vibration very um men led culture and women are supposed to be under so i felt that a lot and during my juice fast i recognized that actually i should not anymore that my spirit wanted to feel free and i got married to be on the same team with my with my husband at that time we were supposed to be a team and we were supposed to build together and and do things together and yet i felt this for the last for the last years of my marriage as i started changing myself as i started working on myself i felt that he was not on my team anymore so he really got into his own uh really hard healing process and I give him all the grace and all the love that I can give because it's his own journey and yet at some point by the end of that long juice fast I knew exactly that I was not supposed to be with him anymore and it was so heartbreaking Ariana and so heart crushing that I was I didn't know how to go through it I was I really didn't have many resources to cope with that pain and with that grief and of course having a child um, with him we wanted our child it, it was a, a very beautiful experience and yet just the choice of what what do I choose do I choose to let that go and I think that was the hardest for me like really really to sit down and say I want a divorce and um, for him it was hard also and I know for sure that I chose both of us because I knew that he was not healing with me either I wanted him to feel free and I wanted him to to be happy one day and so that was that and and yet I had to again I had to go through the whole grief process and and seek psychological support even for divorced women so I could truly gather my strength back and my power back because divorce left me with a lot of different things to work on and to recognize where I have more room to grow and more opportunity to uh, create a different life for myself and my child <laughs> yeah so and and what about your relationship with your son I I, I think um, from what I heard uh, he came as a a blessing on your path and I'm I don't know how old is he now and how, how has it been for you with, with him he's seven and a half now um, and it's been really a beautiful journey because from the beginning I committed myself to gentle par parenting and um, truly bringing him up in a different way than I was brought up and I think it took me it truly takes this really deep change and I think diet is a very very big part of it whether people like it or some people experience you know hard feelings of letting their previous diet go that's that's one of the things is is um understanding that the way we were brought up might not be the best way and that is not again to say that some someone was wrong someone was doing the things that were not supposed to be done it's rather to learn from our parents mistakes we're all humans we do mistakes and for me it was a lot of intention to bring up my child in the uh, environment of love and support and encouragement and truly let him to be who he is from the get-go from the very start uh, i um 
made sure that I breastfed him. So I really was aware of physical benefits of breastfeeding, of um, also emotional and spiritual and physiological benefits. And so I breastfed him until he went off by himself. And I put a lot of effort and intention into creating great relationships with him. I have stayed with him at home until he was three years old. And so I poured all my energy and all my love in that little being. And um, now he, I see that the way he grows up is very different from what I experienced. So he has choice of what he wants to eat, right? Going back to food again, um, the food aspect of it. Um, he recently he started making his own juices so he would just go to the fridge and he would just you know make his own green juice or watermelon juice and uh, he loves smoothies and yet with his dad again there is this element of freedom all the time realizing that my child is not me I should stay away from projecting my past, my present, my future onto him and rather be like sit back and be attentive and learn from him. First of all, not being afraid of um, not being just like, oh, I'm an adult. I'm his mom, so I'm right all the time. Rather be flexible and open to the experience and recognizing that there is there is a spirit in this tiny body still developing but yet it's it's another human being and that's precious that's life and so I really do my best to let him express himself he's very much into electronics electrical engineering since he was very young and I allowed him to have tools and materials that other kids didn't have access to just because I saw that if I give him those tools and materials that are considered to be, in some cases, you know, adults, of course, with supervision, but just let him explore who he was and let him build from there. And now I see that all that energy and effort that I put into him actually pays off and he is truly developing his electrical engineering skills and he's going far beyond like his level of um kids who go to school i recently started homeschooling him so i he went for to kindergarten and to the first grade and after the first grade i decided that that was that was it he didn't feel happy at school there there was no opportunity for him to really express and who he was and and to learn and develop his skills and they don't really teach kids at school uh, those complex engineering things that he wants to learn now at his age and um it was really a aligned decision both of us wanted to make it happen and now he feels very happy being at home and learning what he wants to learn and it's it's been a good beautiful journey we had our hardships because of the divorce because of the separation and it was really hard on him and yet I I think I was doing a pretty good job to make sure that he has two houses and that he sees his dad and that he knows that his dad is there for him all the time regardless of what happened between us adults um yeah mm, beautiful and also Nice that he's, uh, he's learning home what he, what he wants to, to be learning. I saw on one of your short videos, I think, some thing that he built. Um, not sure what's the word in English, but like a, there was a little thing turning, right? And I thought that it was pretty badass to build that at seven years old. Like, because, uh, and I think these are skills that are very needed uh, for any community anyone who knows electronics and who know manual work, repair, building, um, or, or, you know, solar panel, anything like that is very, very, very useful for any community. So these are skills that are very, very valuable, actually. Yes, and especially here in Colorado, there are 
there are a lot of new technologies being developed and a lot of electrical and engineering like most of the city that I live in on solar panels and there's a lot of for him to discover and explore so I think it's, it's just fantastic yeah it looks like uh, amazing to build that at seven years old and so how much time was there in between this this phase the the divorce and the separation the end of the the four months choose fast and how, how was it after that and what led you to the process of a very very long fast of uh, 10, 10 months or uh, over 10 months uh, which is incredible so so what what happened uh, up until there um so i when i left my husband finally officially separated from him it was 2020 so it was the middle of pandemic and uh, um a lot of things were changing and a lot of people were showing up in my life that helped me in that process of grieving and yoga was my true space where I would come and, and be myself and process things and sometimes cry on the mat and truly just feel feel all of that and and let it and let it go and let it flow through me and I think I at that time I encountered a lot of ghosts from the past <laughs> if I may put it this way um I think separating with my husband I we were together for 11 years and it was it was a lot long time and um I felt that I felt all the turmoil of divorce so it was all sorts of conflicting thoughts in my head you know if it was me and if it was if I could still repair that and what about the child so so the the just physical separation didn't stop this psychological process of um really cleansing my psychological energy from from that experience and uh I experienced at that time I experienced a lot of I would say my ex-husband and I left him he became very angry because of that and um he started expressing that anger on me more and more often and I felt the lack of the community in a way during that time uh, during COVID and the people who were close to me I thought who were I thought my friends they were very much against of my raw foods lifestyle so they did not support it they would say that you know a lot of different things that I should have stayed with my husband and I so a lot of shoots and uh, unsolicited advices <laughs> that I kept receiving from people. Um, and at some point, I felt as if I was getting weak from that. Uh, you know, uh, the energies were so intense and truly reminded me of my childhood in a way, how it was like very dramatic um toxic relationships in the family at some in some parts of it and I think the only person who I could really relate the only two people who I could really relate in my family when I was growing up was my brother and my grandfather so those were the anchors of light that the ideal of good relationships that I had and I was striving to to have those relationships and yet in COVID everything was about me purging those experiences and cleansing myself energetically and physically and at some point I I recognized I started doing this like more and more different modalities of healing I would experience so I would do vibrational healing you know, and the Reiki, I got certified in Reiki, I started really moving the energies. 
and um, I was learning Native American wisdom of how to heal the body with various um, herbal medicines, with different techniques, with their approach to elemental, uh, to res uh, with respect to elements, to fire, water, um, air, and earth. And I, I was learning all that wisdom, and it was just you know, going through me and downloading and it was always the process of a big unfolding and expansion until the point where I felt that I was tired. I felt that I was tired to be by myself on this journey. And I also experienced that I wanted to stay away from online and even from my channel and I wanted to process all of that and while I continued learning about healing and I continued gathering more and more knowledge getting my certifications at the same time I was I was getting stronger on like the healing path of the path of the healer but I was getting weaker um in not being able to manage those energies from people, those aggressive energies. And at some point I, I turned into food. So it was, it was very like, it was very um, unexpected experience for me. And yet looking back now, I understand it was absolutely hundred percent necessary. And I have learned so much from it more than from anything until until that point so when I turned back to eating cooked food cooked vegan food so for me like there is no question about eating animal products I think that's I hope that's gone like for good and forever and you know I I don't like saying that that's for sure but I that's how I feel right now so for me it was going back to I remember I was making this vegan lasagna for my son and <laughs> I it was winter time, it was cold, and it was and I cut myself a slice and I tried it and I felt that it was almost as if trying a cigarette. It was very weird feeling and energetically it was different. And by that time I was raw for like four years already, I think. Yeah. And um I ate that lasagna, of course. I I also noticed, so I was aware that I was pushing through my consciousness and doing that. And yet I also wanted to experiment. I wanted to see, okay, so what's going to happen now? And I got sick from that lasagna. I really <laughs> felt like detox symptoms. My nose started running, um, maybe like after a couple of hours. And uh, I had a headache and... It was not pleasant, so I stayed away from cooked food again. And with time, and especially I had uh, I had a friend at that time in my life who was very judgmental about my lifestyle. And so kind of with her, I started going here and there, eating some cooked food, some desserts, whatever, thinking that I was connecting and thinking that I was going back into community and kind of becoming normal again, <laughs> you know. <laughs> And uh, um, I I noticed so many shifts and changes, Ariana, in my like entire perception of life and just the vibration wise. And I started getting, um, I felt tired of cooked food. Like I felt that my body would feel like fatigued. And I would need more rest and I would need more energy to process food and I would need more um, time to digest it. And so I started noticing all those shifts. As I did notice those shifts, at the same time, I had to go, I had to work two jobs and I had to support my son financially and myself. And all of that was just kept compounding and, and presenting itself as a big challenge and I somehow or rather very subtly it's a very subtle process of slipping back into uh, the old way of eating food and I think at that time I was processing again a lot of 
old traumas, childhood traumas, and generational traumas. My, my grandparents went through the World War II. So there was a lot, even, even from that, still dragging into my life. And so truly learning, like during COVID, I learned how to separate myself, my experiences from generational experiences, how to heal that kind of traumas. And yet, so I ended up uh, eating cooked food, like solidly for like two, three months, cooked vegan food. And then I I became very aware to how it made me feel, how much worse it made me feel. And I was not, I found out that the all the addictive qualities of cooked food. So now comparing to after I was raw and really, um, it was like step back and learning, should I stay over there that step back or should I just continue and learn from that experience? And I recognized that it didn't make me feel good at all. I then switched to like being raw until four and then still eating some cooked food in the evening. But the whole entire structure of my eating was I recognized it as being unhealthy. And I started asking myself a lot of questions again. So what's going on with me internally? What's going on with my with my mind, with my spirit? How can I assist that internal healing? So I go back to what I was doing on my physical level. So really like healing myself on the physical level opened up more and more emotional uh, issues that I needed to heal and also the traumatic experiences that I carried with me and I needed to heal and looking back I'm just thankful that that happened because um, as you might know it ended up and manifested in, in the in the fibroid tumor in my uterus which was pretty large it was nine centimeters tumor and I I was not surprised at all when I was diagnosed with it. I just honestly went to see what it was because pain bothered me a lot and I didn't know what it was. So I went to a doctor to use their machine to see <laughs> what's inside. And uh, when I was diagnosed, I it was obvious to me personally why it, it the physical disease manifested in the level of uterus so it was just you know um recognizing that how much as as we are suppressed as women in the society in general and how much we are being taught to be disconnected from our children from our creativity from our experiences and um recognizing that you know it also manifested in the in the second chakra in in the orange chakra of creativity and sacral chakra that i knew that i was still not allowing my personal creativity to express fully completely I love doing art, I love playing music, and I was suppressing that so much, and I was just putting it down, telling myself, I cannot be everything, you know, I cannot be a health consultant and an artist at the same time, and so those kind of limitations that I put on myself, on my spirit, uh, they truly played a role, I think, in, in this disease being there, present, at that time a year ago so when I came to that point I it was just for me it was no question of how I was going to heal that and I truly felt blessed at the doctor's office when I heard them saying that well we don't know the cause of this disease we're just gonna offer you hysterectomy and they can um, take your uterus away and when I told them that I wanted to have more children they they said well we will try to save part of your uterus and take just that part that was affected by tumor and you know <laughs> I just thanked them when I left because I knew that I would be able to do 
the same thing again to heal myself again um so that's what brought me to the uh, my longest uh, as of today <laughs> 10 <laughs> months just <laughs> fast <laughs> yes yes and i know the they give uh yeah they give suggestion that would have quite intense consequences uh, on hormonal level and um again we find these diagnosis and that's where also it's good to have the spirit strength to to resist so did you know straight ahead that you would refuse their diagnosis or um was i i imagine there is a triggering aspect to having this external authority say things that after are, are in our mind even if we know them not to be true so how, how was it um it was very eye-opening experience to me <laughs> the moment I got to the hospital um it just reminded me I had like a flashback of all those multiple uh uncount countless trips to the hospital and to doctors that I had before and not being there for a long time for the last five years and then coming back into the hospital and just was it felt very sterile it felt very uh disconnected from human experience like true human personal experience with healing and disease and just understanding that manifestation of any disease is is a tremendous learning opportunity is tremendous profound experience of you can get to know yourself on a different level when you really look at that pain and at that what what is being manifested in your body so for me yes hearing the diagnosis was it was not surprising but hearing the explanation was very surprising to me so I clearly understood that they they have no idea how the body works you know they had no idea how to help me out um and i just you know i just had to be with that and i'm okay with that after all of of the experiences i had with the medical system because i truly when i come to a doctor i see another human being who was just taught something that doesn't make sense to me anymore you know and uh their knowledge was just not proven experientially experientially with me i personally didn't get any benefits from what they're taught to do and uh, even worse i got you know much more um worse conditions from what they were offering so for me going with the medical system solution was not an option at all um also i don't have any hard feelings for for them because as i said i recognize them as simple human beings who entered the medical school hopefully in the desire to help people to help our fellow humans and the fact that they just don't know how to do it um and not many of them are willing to question because it became a business structure. Uh, it's scary and hard to question those things and especially change something in life when you're already an adult, when you have your family and your responsibilities and everything. And so for me, it was just a learning experience, just respecting their point of view and then walking away into my own truth and into my own path. Mm -hmm. and um and so how, how, how did you get started with with your your new liquid period did you did you start straight ahead or did you did you prepare yourself and did you did you know that it would be that long or did you start and told yourself that you would you would just see as it goes um so I started almost instantly. I waited for a couple of days after the diagnosis because I was expecting my juicer part to come. I had the replacement part coming in, 
my juicer didn't work at that time. And once I got the juicer part, I told myself, well, it was it was very perfect. I felt like it was a very perfect day to start a juice fast. It was like foggy outside, very cozy. <laughs> I I just told myself, yeah, let's just do it. And let's see how that goes. I didn't know that would be a very long one. And yet, as I was going through this juice fast, and as I was seeing, you know, in the middle of juice fast, I checked if my tumor was getting smaller and it was. So it was a good point for me to check if I was doing the thing that is helpful. And I also, as I was doing the juice fast, I... I just I just love it. Like the the first time doing just fast might be very challenging, but the more the body cleanses, the more we go with it, the more we develop a habit, it becomes really easy. So for me, it was a very pleasant, very joyous experience. And um I mean a lot of juice, a lot of delicious juice, colorful and just feeling very elevated, feeling being in my purpose again, feeling that I have aligned my my mind and my spirit back again, just discovering that why the tumor was in my uterus. So just the location of it made me think out of the box a lot and think of all the other aspects of healing emotional healing spiritual healing how do we approach this type of healing how do we do we seek help from a therapist or do we do it ourselves do we use some other different modalities that are available um i also did a lot of different um, body work techniques like i kept practicing yoga of course i um also went through a rolfing experience so that is aligning of the body and of the tissues and uh, I really needed that and I found an amazing practitioner who helped me with that so there were a lot of things that were just coming together simply unfolding again in a very beautiful way and I didn't feel like stopping any sooner I just simply was just flowing with it and being with it and listening to what was coming through what was being uh, what was coming on the surface and what I needed to work with in terms of emotional and psychological healing and and it's been really profound experience again so <laughs> yeah I can imagine and um did you was it different from from the the previous fast in terms of waste that uh, eliminated or um you know i i did you did you learn about your genetic did you get your uh, eyes check and do you do you so it 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 helps sometimes to understand our genetic weaknesses and also our um, our past physical struggle as well to to know more about about this yeah, I um as I studied detoxification, cellular detoxification, I really got into iridology too. Uh, and I was skeptical. I was so skeptical about it. Like if you told me 10 years ago that you can actually read things in your iris, I would tell you no, that's not true. <laughs> and I myself experienced my eye color change a lot dramatically. So um before I even started even juicing I had green brownish and yellowish eye color and now it's almost entirely blue so it's it's been a long journey and uh truly recognizing like I knew that I had a lot of digestive issues looking at uh, the brown color around my iris I used to have a lot of deposits of sulfur in my body. So I had that yellow color all over my eye, eyes. And um, I also knew that I did have genetic weaknesses in my liver. I did have genetic weaknesses in my gallbladder. So 
all of those issues that basically like my mom had, my grandmother, you know, um, my relatives, most of my relatives passed away from cancer. You know, they, they died from um, heart disease and things like that. So I knew that I was passed on some issues already. And um, definitely during this last juice fast, I saw that my iris was clearing even more and more. And um, the waste matter was different. So on my first long-term juice fast, it was all sorts of things. And uh, I did parasite cleanse. I did, um, I passed hard stools at that time, very ancient, like old, hard rock um, texture and feel of it and then I passed a long rubbery mucoid plaque at that time this time it was a little different I still I still recorded everything and um, it looked fresher it looked like it was recent it I could see the texture and color and all of that so I definitely <laughs> learn a lot from human waste matter and <laughs> I, I laugh at myself sometimes because like looking back, I would never even imagine doing anything of sorts. And uh, But the research and true curiosity of what is there? what How does it work? You know, why does it come? Why does it show through the iris color? Uh, how does lymphatic system work? How, how we function as humans, as species? That always has been my... Uh, quest for learning and I I think I think really um, really looking at what is coming out of you and how you change and experiential aspect of healing is very important for me so going with your own experience and not really focusing as I said before on somebody else telling you something so that was that was big Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the, the, the experiential aspect may also assist to understand and prove these theories and maybe go deeper into understanding. And there is a, sometimes a gap between what we, we, we read something, but to really understand it, sometimes it's a, it's a different process. Do you practice yoga every day when you're fasting or even when you're not fasting? Uh, and do you think you would have had such results if you hadn't been moving your body? Um, I do practice yoga every day. Yes, I um, practice several times in the studio. So I find it very important to practice in the community. Um, and the rest of the days when I'm not at the studio, I practice at home. And I do think and I believe that moving body is necessary for achieving deeper results so my first long-term juice fast I did not do any exercises except running after my child <laughs> but uh, I do feel I did notice the difference so I think I also practice hot yoga so Bikram yoga style where you sweat a lot and so cleansing lymphatic system in this way is very powerful uh, through sweat, through the movement, just remembering that we are made out of two fluids and, and cells. So blood and lymphatic fluid, that's what is in our body. And those two things, they need to move. And uh, most of people, they pay a lot of attention to the blood and they completely ignore the lymphatic system, which is 75% versus 25 percent of blood so that is that is very important to understand that that fluid is supposed to be clean in order for us to function properly what i did notice on my juice fast comparing to even just eating food and practicing yoga is that i became much more flexible i do not consider myself to be a flexible person like by by birth by nature when I did gymnastics, I struggled. <laughs> I struggled to stretch my body and to, to be flexible. And yet with this juice fast, I was able to... I, I really don't believe that there is something like improvement in yoga. 
it's just my practice became more aligned and more pleasant and um much more fluid and flowy and I truly felt that my body was really strong also and um yes the detoxification process is greatly assisted by any kind of movement I also tell my clients that if you don't like yoga there is no problem just pick what you love you know dance go on a run go on a walk do some bicycle whatever leads up your heart that's what what kind of movement you need to include when you detoxify your body and would you say more than walking it, it needs to be a little bit more intense and kind, kind of for for my first fast i think i was i was way more stagnant but i noticed aha uh, i mean knowing genetics also if you and me i have i had i have green in my eyes or yellow so knowing about con, uh, chronic congestion uh, lymphatic congestion you would know you need to move as a priority but you would think more more intense right at least as a part of a maybe weekly practice something like that I would say it depends on the person. So sometimes I work with I work with elderly people who can't really do, you know, strenuous exercise. So I tell them even even just you know simple stretching like lifting your arms while you're sitting, something that just moves your body a little bit. Of course, if a person feels like okay, I have so much energy, I gotta go and hit that gym and <laughs> do all the exercises that I can please do that um i think the most important part and aspect of it is truly listening what is for you at that moment what's going on for your body for your experience some people just don't like exercising a lot and if that's the case there are other ways to move the lymphatic fluid like go to sauna you know do a dry brushing um do a massage uh, work on the lymphatic points on your body so there are different kinds of things that can help assist that particular person that we're talking about for myself personally I yes I do prefer I I just think I developed a routine like a very solid routine with my yoga practice that I only skip on very exceptional occasions like I I don't negotiate that I a goal, a practice, and um, I think that that's that's more of my habit now. It's like it's just like brushing my teeth or waking up in the morning and having my juice. It's truly became a habit. So I think developing the habit that people like for themselves that's definitely beneficial to even just anchoring in your practice like when you feel like you're shaky or you're stressed out just go back and ground to whatever practice you do you know it can be art also it doesn't have to be sport right mm -hmm. yes creativity um and um there there is a there is a, a lot to talk about but i'm i'm respectful of your time and um, maybe i i'd like to bring it to a closure for this time but maybe I see there is a lot of material, so maybe I would I would contact you again for for part two in 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 a few months. Uh, but so how um, how did your project and your your website and your your YouTube channel ca came in the picture? Uh, did did it came as did it come as an idea and then took time to manifest, or was it was it quick to manifest and um, also this mm, desire to share and assist other in the process of transforming their life? Uh, I think <laughs> I always love saying that my best video is my first video. And um, the reason being is that I used to be very, I suppressed my voice. So I didn't allow my voice to come through for a very long time, regardless of what I was doing. So no matter what kind of sphere of life I was in, I felt that I didn't have 
the power to express. And that's why to make my first video was a very scary process. And yet again, it came very natural and very aligned because I felt that it was absolutely necessary. So uh, when I started my 115 day juice fast back in 2019, uh, it was September, and together with that, I I felt this strong um, call to start the channel. And my intention was, if I could help just one person, just one human being who has rheumatoid arthritis and suffers so much, with that knowledge and the information that I have, then I'm I'm good. You know, because to me, it was not just about healing myself, but also I truly recognize the collective. I I live in the awareness of us being all together in it. And that's why there is no, from my side, there is no judgment. Like when people come at my to my channel and they tell me, this is not right, this is not, this is not good. I'm simply there to remind people that it's possible and that my experience is valid and that I helped myself, I took myself out of hell and I live a happy and healthy life and I really enjoy this life and I enjoy what I do and I love helping my clients now my clients to see their life improve as well i when i started my channel i didn't think that it would grow and it does grow it does grow very organically very nicely and i find amazing people amazing community there and without people who watch that channel of course it wouldn't exist without those questions and a lot of times those questions from people, they they brought me furthermore in my exploration of who I was. And truly, after starting this channel, I started grounding more and more into my experience of, of being a healer. So just being able to help people locally here where I live and then also extend it to the online community, that is very, very powerful. I couldn't think about it 10 years ago when I was sick. But now, as if when I gained my health back, I find it to be my duty to show others how to do the same thing. Because even though we are all different souls and spirits, we do have very similar physiology. We have the same body and it works in the same way. We are the same species. And not everyone in the collective has this consciousness yet to recognize the power of ourselves as human beings and truly what this whole journey taught me is that embracing that i'm a light being just like you are just like everyone else we are divine beings comprised of this light and when we do support our body in this way from this perspective truly shifting this um myth of us being just meat and bones and um, very you know masculine way of things like straightforward like no this is meat that's how it's supposed to be that's how we're supposed to fix it this body there is much more to it there is much more energy there is a feminine energy that's flowing through this as well and bringing it back to balance and just that's how I guess the luminous raw came to be and, and me getting my um, detoxification certification and deciding to work with clients and deciding to just step into this position of teaching people. So I look at myself more as a teacher and a healer and the guide rather than, you know, I'm, I'm setting a new trend over here or anything like this. It's more of, truly transferring that information that I learned from a lot of people. And I, I stand on the shoulders of 
amazing people who who did the same things before, like Herbert Shelton and Arnold Ehret, and all of those people who, uh, who Dr. Walker, all all of those people and learning from them and digging into that knowledge and then finding the successful stories and putting the dots together. I think that was my my true passion and mission to to be able to show that it's not only possible, but also to lead by example. Like I live this life. I, I am walking in this. And I want people to know that even though it's not easy at times and it's very challenging and there are a lot to it. There's there's so much. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth to be your best self you in in feel in your body because our health is our wealth and and that's how it feels to me the abundance which is not just translates into the money and numbers but also the abundance of connections of love of 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 people uh, being grateful to what i share and of me being grateful to them that i learned from them too because Sometimes the questions are challenging and I need to go and dig into them and, and learn more and then show up with that new information. So I think it's been a very symbiotic experience of, with my audience and with my channel and with the community. And I definitely it wouldn't exist without those people. And But also without me putting that energy and investing that time and acknowledging myself for doing that too i think that's important part to to acknowledge as well mm -hmm. yeah yeah and i can understand this desire to to transmit to also there is a different function to teaching i think and it uh, allows also to deepen the process as it goes and to to transform other things also in our lives so uh, where where can can we find you on different social media platform and maybe your website and maybe why luminous row <laughs> um so luminous row came to me i'll start with that so you can find me on luminousraw.com that's my website you can also scan that little qr code and you just go straight to my website <clears throat> there you can grab a free detoxification guide if you like and um, you can watch my videos there. You can find the uh, Luminous Raw channel on YouTube. I also started a podcast. There are not many episodes yet, but I'm doing uh, more and more work for that too. Uh, it's the same name, Luminous Raw. And I think the word light was always in my life. So the since childhood since playing with watercolors and and learning about light and color and um how truly this world is just a combination of life and dark light and darkness and um when i was coming up with the name for my channel i just i couldn't i couldn't come up with any name and I um, I left it. I said, okay, I'm going to come back to it. And I sat in meditation and the word lumin and luminous kept coming to me. So, and it's it's been a, a thread in my life. So the word light, luminous, lumina, lumin always have been present in some form or shape. And so I decided to go with that. And um, I think the main part of it is truly learning that being able to transmute this light is also being able to love your darkness and um you know the word guru translates light and darkness from sanskrit so a teacher a light and darkness they're both my teachers and stepping on the path of raw embracing the light uh, consuming light in my body you know but also recognizing that i'm just a human and there is this this dark part of me too that i really need to love and tend to 
And um, that's what I think I would like to really tell other people as well, that whenever we fall or we make a mistake, it, it doesn't really matter because it doesn't change our divinity, our being that light. And yet we need that darkness so we can learn. And it's it's much more effective to heal when we not push away that darkness of our past, of our life, of our experiences. And rather we invite it and we befriend it and sit with it and learn from it. And that's when we can be luminous again. So that's that's what it was, I guess. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been very inspiring to be listening to you. I, I do appreciate your 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 the content that you are you know creating on your channel and also on your different social media. I think there are links to that also uh, to find you on, on Instagram. And um, I want to thank you so much for for your time and your testimony. I uh, I really resonate with the many different observations that you brought to the table and some I, I had not uh, put into words like the experiential aspect of this journey and the fact that this journey is really a journey because it takes many years to, to cleanse the body, to access different layers of consciousness and um, it, it, it's it's really a journey you have to embark on it and the experiential aspect is gonna show you if the theories or whatever other cellular detoxification specialists have published or written or shared is true or or not and then it becomes a tangible experience and not just something that we read somewhere or learn from somebody else because you go through the experience of, of the body and I think long-term juice fast is an ex excellent way to really deepen that understanding and the fine refinement also that we need to understand also for triggers and uh, just because when the body is so numb you you don't realize even that you're being triggered so you cannot start the work until you realize and denumb and stop medication or stimulant that are in the way for you to feel these triggers and then you can start to to become aware of it and how they impact you and if you don't feel them you cannot start that that very important work so i i feel this journey of a very light food like liquid food is one of the lightest food that we can have and the less the one that interfered the less with our body that created the less interruption of us but as you share i i feel it's also it can be a very fast ramp like like a, a long-term juice fast is a really fast ramp and i think sometimes there is some some going back because it's sometimes it might be even too fast for what we can maintain as a frequency and there was some slowing down with time and um, I think it's all, all, all re a regulation of that and I think your your testimony was bringing everything all of that um, and how, how important the next step is and how it's really really a process so I really thank you so much and I would like if you're up to it to, to be a part two in, in some in some some later time thank you so much Ariana thank you for having me and given me an opportunity to share with your people. It's, it's my pleasure.